Greetings, Lakes and Jessies. This is Mad Hair Patrick. There have been a lot of shows that are trying so hard to keep their shows going. You had shows like Samurai Jack that took years to make a comeback for season 5. You have Mystery Science Theater 3000 that wants to continue rifting more movies without the help of another streaming service. And you have some like Adventure Time that wants to keep the popularity going even after the official series finale. But one of the most popular anime series that's still trying to keep the engine running, but still marketed as the final season of the series, is Infinity Train Duet. While the series had grown a fan base and became the fourth watch series on HBO Max once it migrated from Cartoon Network, Owen Dennis and the crew still moved on from the show after completing productions for Book 4. He did make storyboards and scripts for a fifth season as a way to pitch more Infinity Train season and possibly a movie, but it was suggested that HBO Max might be concerned of the dark themes and moments. Yeah, we already knew what we were going to get the minute we jumped on the train, and there was no regrets on watching any of those episodes. But numbers don't matter right now, whether they're ratings, fear factors, or whatever. It's time to see if there was any value with the final chapter. Welcome to another episode of The Wonder Reviews. Let's see if the season 4 and on an a good note, this is Infinity Train Book 4 Duet. It's about two boys named Ryan and Mingi, who's been best friends since childhood. They had a dream that they would form a band together, but there was conflict between them regarding their friendship. Ryan tricks men to see his guitar solo performance, only for the Infinity Train to trick them into boarding the train itself. When they woke up, they were wearing One One's engineer outfits, meet a magical bell named Kaz, and discover both their hands share the same numbers. And like before, they had to get their numbers down to zero in order to get their exits. When it comes to the structure of this season, it does have a strong storyline since the theme this time is about friendship. With Ryan and Min being synchronized with the same number, it emphasized that both of them have individual problems and they need to work together to resolve their issues. It not only shows the trials and tribulations of friendship, but it brings the heart of the series involving the two. What's even more interesting that this adventure serves as a prequel to the previous books where we get a glimpse of one and Amelia before the latter took over as the false conductor. However, the Amelia plot device is not focused on here since we are here to focus on the two guys. So I will say it not only succeeds as a prequel, but a standalone season. The only nitpick I have with this season is that it can have some predictable moments like at the end of the Pig Baby Car episode that there was a misunderstanding that Ryan has solved his own problem, but Min brags on and on that he will help Ryan solve his problem even though Min is also the one that needs to solve his own problem. It felt forced and we know it takes both of them to get their exes, not one person. Thankfully, that cliché occurred in almost one episode of the series, up until they enter the Astronaut Club. And with each car they go to, it definitely tests their friendship, like their loyalty and reconnection with each other. And that's one of the biggest reasons why we love Infinity Train so much. We connect with the characters. While the show's story is about resolving Ryan and Min's friendship, both of them are memorable as the previous passengers and well-written. Min worked at a restaurant and gets accepted at university, but he wants to be with his friend Ryan and follow his own dream with less pressure. Ryan is a big dreamer and wants to form a band with Min, but he always makes rash decisions without giving you any second thoughts. As for their friendship, they do make a good team. Even when their numbers go up or down, they remain loyal to one another so they can get back home together. There is also Kaz, a magical bell who tags along with the boys and escorts them through the train. She is a funny comic relief, my only issue with her is that she gets repetitive where every car they enter, she ends up taking up some locals without thinking about what she done to them. These include three evolution aliens, Judge Morpho, a giant pig baby, and a cow creamer. They're not considered the villains of the season, in fact nobody is the main villain in this one. They act more like obstacles, but still likeable with their personalities and world building of their respective cars. But, there are actually two more characters that are well developed, but I can't say it because that would be major spoilers for the last two episodes of the series. I will say that one of the characters goes through depression of losing someone, and the other has to learn to overcome that depression. Think of it as these two characters come from a prequel before the prequel. As we board the train one final time, the animators had to give everything that they got with the animation, and they still succeed. It goes back to the basic where they focus on the imagination of the train cars like the early episodes of the seasons. These include the iceberg car where everything evolves based on the thermostat type device, the old west car where the location is a western gulch with bugs as cowboys and other inhabitants, 
the pig baby car where everything that lives there is huge, the Astro Q car is in our space club, and the castle car has nice architecture along with a giant stone maze. As for the character designs, the human characters stay true to the series while the other train characters present some creativity, from the evolution of the aliens to the dark atmosphere from the monster inside the art gallery car. And the character animation display what each of these characters can do, like when Kes floats around and manifests her sparkles. Plus, it contains some great special effects whenever the sewer glitches the cars, and in the episode The Twins Tape, where we see two memories from both leads synchronizing each other. It not only foreshadows their synchronized numbers, but shows what sort of strong friendship that they have with each other. While well, Season 4 was never meant to be the final season of Infinity Train as a whole, they did have plans to make it up to 8 seasons, but it was still a satisfying season. Infinity Train Duet may not be an epic finale to the series, but still a great season to check out with an engaging story, memorable characters, and extravagant animation. Rather or not you've been catching up on Infinity Train, this is still a must watch for everyone. And with that everyone, we finished the final boarding of Infinity Train as a whole. Thank you guys so much for watching and hearing my personal thoughts on the series. I'm sure you guys also have your own personal thoughts on Infinity Train as a series, so feel free to share your thoughts to everyone. And I would like to thank Owen Dennis and the rest of the cast and crew of the series for what they accomplished to make Infinity Train one of the most amazing anime series of all time. From the imaginative areas, memorable characters, storytelling, dark themes, and strong morals given to us. No matter what happens to the train, I'm still satisfied from what I got from it. I give the final season an A-, and for the last time, it gets the Diploma of Destiny. I'm Mad Hair Patrick, now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to watch more of One One's train documentary videos. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe me for a new review and other project every week. I'll see you soon.